I am longing for the good old days. Remember back in February of 2020? Over the last six months, the world has been wandering in a wilderness, so to speak. We might imagine the Egyptians and the Israelites enduring the plagues. Water turned to blood. The plague of frogs or gnats or flies or locusts or diseased livestock or boils or thunder and hail or darkness or the firstborn destined to die. Or we might imagine the Israelites who have departed, crossed the Red Sea, and found themselves wandering in the wilderness, freed from Pharaoh and their work, but still all of their security and patterns of behavior altered. The loss was great. The grief was deep. They cried out to return to the security, not of what they loved, but to the security of what they knew. Instead of returning, though they wandered, and God, God provided. God provided manna that tasted like wafers made with honey, and God provided water both essentials to survive and slowly turn their grief into gratitude as they began to recreate community. In these days, because almost every facet of lives, our patterns of behavior, our systems have been disrupted or drastically altered, we too long to return to normal to the securities of what we knew and loved. Going to the grocery store, going to the mall, going to work places or work out places, going out to eat or to the movie, visiting family, celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, being with friends, traveling. Schools closed, graduations were canceled. Going to the doctor changed dropping your loved one off at ER doors and sitting in the car by yourself, weeping. Doctors and nurses being the pastor as a loved one takes that last breath. Changes have come so rapidly to us and not of our own choosing in our worship spaces and in our faith practices. No gatherings to celebrate weddings or to remember and celebrate someone who has died. Not going to church to see our brothers and sisters in Christ or no hugging or shaking hands. No fellowship meals, no singing, no passing of the peace. These are all sacred rituals that we long for. Sadly, this pandemic has revealed our shortcomings as people following Jesus. And the veil, the veil has been ripped open in our systems and even in our own hearts, exposing injustice and racism. No one has been exempt. The grief is real and deep and feels unending. We've seen in ourselves and others the early stages of this grief. Denial, anger, tears, frustration, depression. And it is difficult to get to the healing stages of grief because we're still in the midst of such pain. Because we make up the community, the community of faith, then I think it is safe to say that the church, too, is living in a season of grief, deep grief. But this pandemic has also revealed our determination and our commitment and love of serving Jesus. In mid-March, within a week of the pandemic's presence, pastors and congregations figured out how to worship online. Worships now around the region are so creative and congregations are cautiously trying to figure out 
how to return to the sanctuary to worship. Some of our congregations have returned with all safety protocols in place. Others are more confident, believing they don't need all those safety protocols. Some congregations have returned to the sanctuary, and because of COVID-positive cases in worship, they have had to return to online worship. Some are worshiping outdoors in God's creation. Some are worshiping in the parking lot. Some are continuing to worship online, waiting for the COVID numbers to drop to safer numbers. As time marches on, ministers and members have found new ways to connect with their flock. Leadership teams have stepped up to do more connecting with their people. And while it is not the same, and while we long still to be together, we still have our eyes fixed on Jesus, giving thanks every Sunday and taking communion virtually and offering our gifts electronically. However, we know the church is more than this. Our congregations have also found ways to continue their ministry in the community by feeding the hungry, preparing and serving hot meals, and delivering donuts, making backpacks, making activity bags, and delivering to doorsteps, hosting drive-bys for a celebration of a birthday or a graduation, taking this time to renovate the preschool areas or the children's areas, taking a special offering for their ecumenical neighbors, or week of compassion. We have altered our witness and our care for one another the best way we can when we cannot physically be present with one another, especially in sickness or in death. Passionate about social justice, many Oklahoma disciples have participated in the Poor People's Campaign and continue to advocate for Black Lives Matter and offer a disciple's presence in peaceful protests. Oklahoma disciples have picked up the essentials and are still witnesses to the love and grace of God. It is hard, and it is challenging us at every level, and still it is beautiful, very beautiful. One of the most heartbreaking and painful decisions this spring was to cancel international affairs for our young people and the whole summer camp and conference ministry. This created yet another layer of grief for both the campers, parents, and volunteer adults who love camp and conference. However, in wonder and amazement, Michael Davison, with the help of the Commission on Children, Youth, and Young Adults, created a virtual camp experience for our youth. And in addition, Michael, with the help of some other ministers, created a virtual vacation Bible school experience for Oklahoma disciples and the denomination's use. We do not know what next summer's camping ministry will be yet, but we hope and we pray for a vaccine and or a miracle. Stewardship in congregations around the region is healthy right now. Congregations who are eligible for the payroll protection plan loans, which helped ease financial financial anxieties and faithful giving reportedly, has been steady to increasing. The region purchased the resources from the Center for Faith and Giving for 2020 for every disciple congregation to have access And recently, the Oklahoma Disciples Foundation hosted webinars on essentials for giving during a pandemic with Bruce Barkhauer, the executive director for the Center for Faith and Giving. Stewardship is vital to our faith, especially in such a time as this. It is one of several ways we give thanks to God for God's steadfast love and amazing grace which the psalmist says follows us or pursues us all the days of our lives. 
In the last two years, we have had some congregations come to the end of their ministry and close, leaving wonderful memories of church. Ada First Christian Church, Tulsa Odyssey Christian Church, Oklahoma City Northwest Christian Church, Dell City Christian Church, and Midwest Boulevard Christian Church. We have had three congregations with non-disciples pastors withdraw from our Oklahoma Disciples family, Taloga, Skyatook, and Geary. The Commission on Clergy has not missed a beat the past few months thanks to technology. This spring, the Commission on Clergy approved two candidates for ordination, C.C. Jones Davis and Gregory Chambers. C.C.'s ordination took place on August 30th by Zoom at Edmund Trinity Christian Church. And Gregory's ordination service will be in May of 2021 at New Hope Christian Church in Oklahoma City. If God taps you on the shoulder or whispers your name that you are called to serve, the Commission on Clergy is going to help you find the right pathway to vocational ministry. We are celebrating that we currently have more candidates for vocational ministry than we have had in a long time. The Commission on Faith in Action partnered with the Commission on Clergy in 2019 to offer pro-reconciliation anti-racism training for Oklahoma clergy. To this date, 98% of Oklahoma ministers have taken this training. Now we know that a one-day training does not fix systemic racism, but it surely is the beginning of a new way of seeing how our hurtful words and actions that are buried deep within us can be transformed to bring healing and wholeness. The new Commission on Refugee and Immigration Ministry has been quietly active. They have recently received and graciously welcomed a refugee family to Oklahoma. Believe it or not, Search and Call for New Ministers continues our region welcomed Reverend David Emery, who was called to serve as lead minister at Tulsa Harvard Avenue. His first Sunday in Oklahoma was the beginning of the pandemic, and he is patiently waiting to gather and meet folks in person. Reverend Paul Appleby has been called as senior minister to Lawton First Christian Church. Reverend Richmond Adams has been called to serve as senior minister at Pawnee First Christian Church. The Reverend Dr. Tom Lida has been called to serve at First Christian Church in Norman as an associate minister. Reverend Ron Motley has been called to serve as a bivocational minister at Westside in Duncan. Reverend Elizabeth Gresham has been called to serve as minister in Nawada First Christian Church. We will celebrate in a bit the newest congregation in Oklahoma, Simplicity Christian Church in Oklahoma City. I hope you are ready to welcome them with open arms. It is so good to be with you, even though it is virtually. I am grateful for the tech team who has come together with their gifts to bring us all together to connect us as disciples of Christ, to remind us that we do not do ministry isolated or alone, but together. So thank you, Michael Davison and Jeff Champeau, Travis Carlson and Chuck Marshall for bringing your gifts this day. I am always grateful to the regional staff, Michael Davison and Ellen Beer, for their continued passion and commitment and joyful work. On your behalf. We have all learned how to work remotely and are still determining what is essential for this day and time. 
I am grateful, especially grateful, to the outgoing regional board for their commitment and their wisdom to this ministry over the last two plus years. And I'm very excited to welcome the incoming regional board whom you will meet shortly. There are two priorities for us for the next two years. First is to get the regional office moved from 301 Northwest 36th Street. The region's 60-year lease with First Christian Church of Oklahoma City comes to an end in November of 2023. And the current plan is to move to the building that Oklahoma Disciples Foundation purchased a few years ago off of Western and I-44. As soon as we get the plans and the cost for the renovations, the regional board hopes to launch a campaign to raise funds for this very exciting project. Our second priority is to covenant once again to serve, to serve as, and to be disciples of Christ. What does that mean? Maybe it means that we covenant with one, again, one, one another again to make communities where justice happens. That we covenant with one another again to love our neighbor, not as ourselves, but more than ourselves. Maybe it means that we covenant with one another again to be messengers of the divine image in the world bearing God's love and amazing grace and God's kindness and care for all creation. I am excited to wonder what the state of the Oklahoma Regional Church will be when we gather again in 2022. Grateful for your continued mission and ministry, and your strong disciples' presence in Oklahoma. Would you pray with me? Good and gracious God, in the last few months, we've discovered feelings and behaviors in ourselves and in one another that we have not seen before. We know you see us too. We are grateful for your mercy and your grace that follow us and pursue us all the days of our lives. As we continue to love your church and to discover what is essential to our faith and our practice, recreating our communities, we know we cannot be disciples of Christ alone or isolated. We must be disciples together our eyes fixed on your beloved son, Jesus, ready to serve like Jesus, bringing good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovering sight to the blind, and letting the oppressed go free. Like the disciples, we might say to you, we can't do that, O God. And you say to us, oh, but you can, because my Holy Spirit empowers and equips and connects you with me, with life and breath and love. I need you to help me bring healing and wholeness to my very broken world. That is your call as disciples. Thank you, O oh God, for calling us and trusting us to be your partners in ministry. Help us, O oh Holy One, to stay fixed on Jesus, not only with our eyes, but also with our hearts and our minds. And most importantly, most importantly, help us remember that there is nothing that can separate any, us, any of us from your love that we have come to know through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Lord and Savior. Amen.